What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we have a video that a lot of you guys have been asking me to do and a video that I have seen a lot of questions on all the forums and groups. The OMP Hobby M2 and the Blade Fusion Smart 180. The newest Fusion 180 on the market that Blade has released and we have the OMP infamous OMP Hobby M2. So basically this video is going through the both of them, seeing what the differences are, which one is better, which one is worse, which one should you get. So personally, I like both these models. I think they are both fantastic little helicopters. They both have their pluses and minuses. I love them both. So let's get into this. First, we're going to start with the Fusion 180. So as you can see in the unboxing video, we have a plastic canopy. We have an all plastic rotor head a plastic composite blade, plastic swash plate, metal upper and lower bearing blocks. We have a belt driven tail and we have plastic cased metal gear servos. Again, carbon fiber mainframe, smart technology, Avion 15 amp ESC. And we have the bigger 3,900 kV main motor, which is from actually a Blade 230S motor gives it a ton of power we have a nice thick main gear we have our port on the side for binding and we have the new 6250 mhxb fly barless controller and then we are running a plastic cased plastic gear tail servo so a little bit of both the original 180 had plastic main gear servos and they would always strip so i'm very glad to see that on the newer ones that they went with the metal kit metal geared Cyclic servos, plastic case really doesn't bother me on any model because plastic cases will break in a hard crash, cheap to fix, no gotta worry about it. Uh, the all plastic rotor head assembly keeps it light, but in a crash, of course, will break, but that's, you know, normal. Thick carbon fiber mainframe sides, which I really like, and a nice durable nylon skids which i am a fan of personally i don't care for carbon fiber skids because any hard bounce on the ground you break carbon skids where these can take a beating so we have a bigger 10 millimeter tail boom which eliminates the need for boom supports so we have a nice strong tail boom we have a stronger plastic tail fin which again better because it can take a beating we have an all plastic encased tail rotor housing with a idler bearing in the top, plastic slider, plastic blade grip. So we have a lot of plastic on this model, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It keeps the model very, very light. So it is light and we are going to weigh it in this video. We are running the Spectrum, after I dropped it, G2 450 milliamp 30C smart packs. I really, really like these batteries. I love the simplicity of putting them in, set it, forget it. You don't have to do nothing. You plug it in the charger, check out the unboxing video. It starts charging automatically. I like that you can set how long they have their discharge for. Awesome, awesome little battery. Great power in this model. This is a 4S helicopter. So we are running 4S, so we have tons of power. This thing has power for days with the lightness. It is very light. It is an awesome machine. I really like it. The canopy, on the other hand, I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme. I like the orange and I like the idea they have here, but it's very hard to see on a dark day and we will see that in the flight video. I like bright colors. So we're going to probably put a brighter canopy on this model, but I do like that it is plastic. It can take a beating. Nice little canopy, nice grommets. It does hold very well on the model. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the M2. So now we have the OMP Hobby M2, which everybody knows this model. We have seen it on the channel, countless, countless videos on this thing. So now both of these models are in stock configuration. The only difference is I have a vinyl wrap tail boom. I like bright models, especially when they are these smaller helicopters. I like them to be very bright. Now, I love the yellow uh, fiberglass main canopy we're gonna start with. Fiberglass canopy. I am a huge fan of fiberglass canopies over plastic. 
but there is a big weight difference. Now the newer OMP Hobby M2s do come with a plastic canopy. So weight is gonna probably be the same. This is an older V2, but it's the older Explorer that had the plastic blade grips and metal block. The newer ones come with metal blade grips and a metal full metal swash blade. Newer ones, of course, come with a plastic canopy, but I personally prefer fiberglass. I, the paint colors and schemes look so much nicer on fiberglass. I'm a fiberglass canopy person, strong, but in a crash, of course, the fiberglass is gonna chip, but they are pretty strong canopies. I have crashed with this canopy on the helicopter, and as you can see, it is still perfectly fine. Not a single scratch. Anybody that watches my channel knows I'm very picky with canopies. If it's scratched, I get rid of it. So now we have, of course, carbon fiber mainframe, but we do have a direct drive main motor. Now, I really like this for part simplicity. You have no gears to strip. You have nothing. You just have a direct drive motor straight to your main shaft and you are good to go. Plastic cased metal gear servos on all cyclic. We do have a motor driven tail versus the belted tail. We have a carbon fiber tail fin, which does break in a crash, of course. We are running a plastic tail blade, and we have an all aluminum inverted teardrop style tail boom, which is very strong and again, eliminates the need for boom supports. Plastic nylon durable skids, which again, I like. I don't like the carbon because, especially for a beginner, somebody new into the hobby that's learning, any hard bounce and you will crack and break a skid. So I do like the nylon skids, of course. Uh, I do like the simplicity of the mainframe. If you break a lower side, you can replace a lower, you can replace an upper. So I do like that versus on the Fusion 180 where you have to replace the entire side of the helicopter mainframe and the OMP M2, you can replace the side that you broke. Upper and lower aluminum bearing blocks slash Motor mount, aluminum tail bracket or tail boom clamp, very strong and good bond. We have a one piece main shaft that runs from the motor to the head, aluminum head block and composite plastic blade grips with a composite plastic main blade. Now, of course, like I said, the newer OMP Hobby M2s have aluminum blade grip on the EXP and the V2, so your model might be a little different. We have a sliding mechanism for the battery, which I do like. Slide it, you're done. It is locked into place versus the Blade Fusion 180. That is the traditional Velcro and strap, which again is still strong and holds it in place. We are running a 3S battery. So we are running the stock OMP Hobby 3S 650 milliamp pack, 3S power XT30s. Now the thing on the, the, the nice thing about the M2 is you are running an XT30, okay? So you can fit a selection of batteries as long as it fits in between the frame rails, upper width and height. But honestly, the M2 OMP batteries are so cheap. Just get yourself a bunch of them. I have a bunch of batteries with the tray, so that way I can just slide them in in between flights and no need to worry about unstrapping them. Now with the Blade Fusion 180 Smart, because of the smart technology, we have the IC2 connectors. So you can cut these off and run a traditional XT30 style connector and you would not need the smart technology, but you lose all your battery telemetry, your RPM, you lose all the stuff that makes this helicopter an awesome little machine. Now, no, they will not fit. XT30s will not fit into IC2s. They are too far apart pinned wise. Now, maybe you can try to squeeze them together. I don't know, but it's not gonna be a strong connection. So now we'll go back to the OMP Hobby M2. We have a flight controller, the OMP protocol, uh, all self-contained, but it is very nice that you can run DSMX and or Fataba S-Bus into the controller to suit your flying style. I am running a Spectrum DSMX satellite down in the bottom, run the wires up, and I hide them through the factory wires. Plug straight into the top. It is fully programmable just like on the Blade Fusion 180. We have a plastic anti-rotation bracket, of course, composite blade grips, links, 
all that. We are running a, now I don't know the KV of the motor, but it is the Sunny Sky R40-3, big Sunny Sky motor, tons of power. And of course we are running a Sunny Sky tail motor that is a R11-3. So outrunner on tail and outrunner on main motor. Awesome helicopter against another awesome helicopter. Side by side comparison of the two. No canopy skid this head to head. So head block to head block. Blade length is identical on the two same. I think the OMP has a five millimeter shorter main blade because I believe this uses a 170 or 175 and the 180 uses a 180 millimeter blade. So the blade length on the Blade Fusion 180 Smart is a few millimeters longer than the blade length on the OMP Hobby M2, but the M2 has a very wide paddle and a very unique blade design, which gives this helicopter an awesome feel on the collective. Very crisp, very fast, very sharp. The Fusion 180 also has a wider paddle, but it, and it necks down to a narrower tip of the blade, but you can definitely see the difference in the two blades here. Both blades are very strong material. Both blades fly great. The Fusion 180 does give you a skinnier set of blades to suit your flying style. I have personally not tried them yet. Servo layout between the two. The Fusion 180 uses the traditional Fusion lineup of servo CFX layout. Where you have your first servo, second servo, third servo. Your elevator servo is always in the back in an optimal servo geometry. And the OMP Hobby M2 uses a more slim lined. The helicopter is a lot more narrow in the servo layout and your elevator servo is tucked into the back here. Again, direct control linkages straight up. You have full adjustable linkages, turnbuckles on ball links on both ends on the OMP Hobby M2. And on the Blade Fusion 180, you have a traditional Z-Bend style at the bottom and a single turn link at the top, but again, fully adjustable. The head is fully adjustable as well. And with the OMP Hobby M2, the blade links are fixed. So you have no adjustment from your swash plate to your blade grip, but honestly, you don't need it. As long as your servos are 90 degrees, your blades will be at zero pitch at mid stick. So we are running a two-in-one ESC. So you have your main motor and your tail motor ESC are built together. I do not know the specs of the two, but they are plenty for this model. It flies great out of the box. Again, the Fusion 180 Smart has a 15 amp Avion ESC, which gives you your full range of telemetry. Again, it is a belt driven pinion main gear style motor so you have your motor to your pinion to your main gear so you have a little bit more rotating parts on the fusion 180 than you do on the omp hobby m2 the omp hobby m2 is definitely simplistic very easy to work on if you have to change a main shaft i have videos on that on the channel but it is very simple and clean so the two side by side to each other nose in they sit about the same height the only difference is the Fusion 180 sits, the head assembly does sit a little higher. I don't know if you can, guys can see that, but the head assembly on the Fusion is a tad bit higher. So you have a lower head assembly, which is gonna give you a lower center of gravity to your, your helicopter. The Fusion 180, the battery sits a little higher. And on the OMP Hobby M2, the battery sits lower, which again gives you that servo, that, that servo not servo, that CG down. So it gives you a more neutral feeling model. But again, both these models feel great. So now let's get into the weight part of this video. Let's see what they weigh. All right, so we got the scale out. Both helicopters are flight ready, meaning battery and them canopies, everything on to go fly. So we're gonna start with the Fusion 180. We are in grams. We are going to set it on the scale and we are at exactly 250 grams flight ready. So now let's grab the OMP Hobby M2. Again, flight ready. 318 grams. So the M2 is 68 grams heavier than the Blade Fusion 180. And that has a lot to do with the 
plastic parts, the simplicity of the all plastic tail casing, plastic head, it is a very light model. And you feel that lightness in the air. It is very light. M2 again, 318 grams. So exactly 68 grams difference between the two models. So which one? M2 Fusion 180. Honestly, both. That is my honest opinion. I like them both. I have more flight time on my M2, so I lean towards the M2, but I've been getting a lot of flight time on the 180, and I really like it. I like both models. I don't have a favorite. I like all helicopters. I like anything that flies. I don't have a favorite. So let's go get a flight in and let you guys decide. Hopefully this video will help somebody to choose and decide, but I don't think you should choose between the two models. I personally think if you can have both, get both, because they are both great in their own ways. I really like them both. So let's go get a flight in and let's see how they perform. All right, so now for the flight comparison part of this video. So we have the Blade Fusion 180 up first. We are flying on the iX12. Okay, I did turn stability mode back on for self-leveling in normal mode, but idle up one or two, it is completely off. <clears throat> we are filming on the new GoPro today, so hopefully video quality is better for you guys. So we're gonna take off in a normal stability mode, and we're just gonna compare the two. Now, I like both these helicopters, so I personally can't choose, but hopefully this video will help you guys make your decision. I think they're both fantastic machines, and we'll see what the flight difference is. So we're gonna take off normal mode, stability on, self-level, and let's spool up. All stock, of course. It's a little windy today, but that's okay. So we're gonna flip hold mode off, spool up. We have the soft start put back on. Normal. We are back to 100% stock settings. So we're in stability mode, self-level. So we're gonna test that. Pretty much a hands-off hover right there. Full forward, let off the stick. Full right, let off the stick. Okay. Now it is windy, so it's gonna blow it around a little bit, but that's hands-off. As you can see, it is solid. So now in this mode here, again, I mean the wind's pushing it, so it's not the best, but you can see it is pretty solid. So of course, you're gonna fly around, you have your normal full control, your full tail control, everything feels great. So now let's kick it up into idle up one. Now with this mode here, uh, I don't recommend 3D with this particular helicopter because head speed is really low, but you can do your mild 3D. But this mode would be more for if you wanna get out of that self-leveling. Okay, you want to get out of it, you're comfortable, you're pushing it around, the helicopter still flies great. Super light, very nimble. So now we're going to kick it up into 100% head speed. Full stability off, head speed comes up. And now we have full 3D capabilities. The helicopter flies very light. It is very nimble. Tail performance is great. So it'll grow with you. Time remaining two minutes. Okay, we're flying a four minute timer. Now we're gonna kick it back into stunt one. Again, stability mode off still, but Lower head speed, longer flying time, gives you that, you know, little bit of comfort. You want to get out of that stability mode. And you have it. And then you flip it back up into 100% head speed. You have your full 3D capabilities. Helicopter will do anything you want it to do. Now we do have battery telemetry. ESC 14.3 volts. 
All right, so now we're hitting our ESC alarm. We're gonna kick it back into uh, the normal stability mode. The helicopter is solid, lower head speed. You're gonna get a much longer flight time in this mode right here, much, much longer. Cause you're at a low head speed. It's handling the wind really good. It is very windy. Tail performance is fantastic. And me and this helicopter, we can never land on the wood. So my first impressions of this helicopter, I like it. I really, really like the Fusion 180. I think it is a fantastic, this is a 180 Smart. I think it's a fantastic helicopter. It flies light, it flies super nimble. So for me, I recommend it. I, I like it, I do recommend it. But now let's get a flight in on the OMP Hobby M2 and let's see what the differences are. Okay, so now we have the M2, the OMP Hobby M2 ready. So now we are flying this helicopter with the Radio Master TX16S. I just haven't had time to put it to my IX12 yet. So let's go ahead and get a test on this one. Now, something I didn't touch in in the flight video of the Fusion 180 Smart is we do have rescue on that model as well, and rescue does work great. So now we already went over the differences on the bench between the two different helicopters. So now let's get a flight in on the M2 back to back with the Fusion 180 and let's see. So now we're going to take off in normal mode, which just like the Fusion 180, we have self level and I wanted them to both be pretty fair to each other. So we're gonna spool up. So now we are in self level mode. Okay, just like the Fusion, the wind's kind of taking it but it's a pretty good hands-off hover. So now we're gonna go full forward, let off the sticks, it comes right back. Full back, let off the sticks, it comes right back. And of course it's gonna drift because there is no GPS assist, it's just self-level. So it's basically when you let off the stick on either model, it's going to automatically level the swash plate for you. So now when you're flying in self-level mode, you're gonna have bank angle assist. So when you yank that stick and you let off, it's gonna flatten it back out. So now self-level works great. We're at a low head speed, of course, so your flight time is gonna be longer. Now with this model, when you flip it up into idle up one, you're gonna have no self-level. It's still a solid helicopter. It'll do everything you want it to do. And now again, this is idle up one, no self level, no auto, nothing, but we do have rescue. So if you screw up, there we are, rescue on, just like the Fusion 180. Okay, now we kick it up into a higher head speed. This is full out, power is about the same between the two. Now the only difference, which might not make it a fair review, is that this one I've set to my style. So I've sped the servos all the way up. I've got more flight time on this one. But tail performance on the M2 is great as well. Flight time is gonna be the same. At a high head speed, you're gonna get your two, you're gonna get your four minutes, three and a half minutes on either model. Power to weight ratio feels right uh i think the fusion 180 feels lighter in the air but again whenever you can full 3d it right all right but then you don't want to fly 3d flip it back in the normal mode and you have a scale flyer a beginner just like the fusion they're both great helicopters personally i can't decide I can't choose one. So hopefully this video for anybody that's looking to get one or the other, if you can get both, I recommend both helicopters. I love my M2. I think it's a fantastic machine. Now we're back in the idle up one. We got full 3D range. Now with, I'm flying a DSMX satellite, so I don't have battery telemetry, but if you're flying OMP protocol with the TX16S, you will have it. Very solid, even without auto level. It's a solid hands-off hover. Helicopter flies great. Tail performance is great. Again, I've had time with this helicopter. 
So I have set it to my liking. Back in the high head speed. Now, of course, back into a normal mode. Solid. Your flight time is going to depend on how you fly. But we do have self level. There's full forward, let off, full right. Let off. All right, we flew our four minute timer. Now let's go ahead and set down. Again, it is very windy. Okay, so that's the M2 there. Now let's grab the 180. So now we have the 180 and the M2 side by side of each other. As we did on the bench review, they're about the same exact physical size helicopter. They're the same blade length. They're, they're pretty much the same size. I think the M2 has a little longer tail boom like we go on over, but they're both, both great helicopters. I can't personally choose one. I like them both. I think they're both fantastic. They both fly great and they both have their differences. The M2 flies a little heavier than the Fusion 180 power to weight ratio wise they feel about the same in the air uh, the weight differences has a lot to do with the all plastic head on the fusion 180 versus the metal with plastic now again this is an m2 explorer the new explorer comes with metal blade grips and metal swash plate this is one of the first ones we have a fiberglass canopy of course we have a plastic canopy both have carbon fiber mainframe both have aluminum tail booms this one has a traditional round tail boom again like we went through already the choice is up to you guys. They're both, both great helicopters. I like them both. I think they both have their places. Uh, I think for an everyday flyer, uh, especially if you're gonna be indoor flying, I think the Fusion 180 does fly lighter, but the M2 flies great too. So, I mean, really, the choice is up to you guys. If you can only have one, pick which one you like the best, which one you can get parts for easiest. Both of them have great parts availability. They both get parts just as fast from each other so really the choice is up to you guys so i hope this video helps somebody out there they're both great machines they both fly fantastic side by side of each other if you give if this video was helpful you like this video give it a like subscribe take care and have a great day